to today's Insta Live. Um, so with Paul's Kitchen and Swan, today we're going to do some amazing barbecue stuff. I've got two awesome, quick, really cool, trendy ideas other than your normal ideas like bangers. I'm going to do a stuffed cheesy sausage in a garlic bread. Absolutely amazing. And a quality surf and turf burger. So, let me make a start. First of all, look at the gorgeous weather. Absolutely brilliant. Got my barbecue ready to go, fired up. So, let's start. I've got... These are like part-baked rolls. So you get them everywhere, you just have to finish baking them, they're sort of two-thirds, three-quarters cooked, and you finish them off in the oven. But these are the ones you need to buy. Any shape, normally small like that, white ones are best, um, and that's what you want to get. So what I'm going to do is, you just cut off the top section, like so, maybe it's a little bit more, and you've got like a little boat. Now these are brilliant to be kept for things like croutons, toasted, great little snack with peanut butter. Maybe two, I think. And then what we're going to do is once we cut them like that, I'm going to get a spoon. And if you just carefully, I'm going to just going to cut with the tip of my spoon around like so. And I'm making the idea is to make like a boat. So you can see where I've cut the bread there. Now I just scoop the bread out carefully. Like so. Without cutting all the way through the bottom. And I'm just basically hollowing that out. That is where I'm going to stuff it with garlic butter and cheese. And it's going to make it really moist and incredible. And when you cut it open it has a lovely cheesy oozy centre. So let me have a look. Nearly ready. See how I've done that? Nice and easy. Just with your fingers, just press it. And you can see quite clearly there, that's my first boat done. I'll do another one, show you again. Leave a little edge. That keeps it all from falling apart. And the best to do these part baked buns because you want to cook them in the barbecue. You don't want fully baked ones. It will work with fully baked ones, but if you do it with fully baked ones, maybe the best ones to do would be something like a, something that's slightly stale, something a couple of days old. You'll get a similar effect. So, get the bread out like that. Squish it down. And by the way, if you've got any questions, fire them away. I will answer them if I can. There you go. A bit more from there. And there is my lovely boat for my sausage. I'm just going to get rid of all that extra excess bread. Like so. Now, next thing, garlic butter. So I've got some butter there. I'm going to put bit of salt in there, a bit of nice pepper, and I'm going to grate some fresh garlic in there. A couple of cloves I think, get plenty of flavour in there. So you could use the ready uh, squished garlic, you can, you? Yeah. the easy garlic. The easy peel one, um, I think it's really good using fresh, the flavour's amazing. Like so, we're going to get some gorgeous fresh parsley in there. So when you do parsley, try not to use the bottom of this stalk, it's a bit woody. Just snap it off a bit higher up. Have some lovely chopped parsley in there. There we go. And then we're just going to mash that together. So that's a basic garlic butter for It's a very any. simple garlic butter. That will work with everything where you like garlic butter. Sometimes put a little bit of thyme in, but that is perfect. And can you use it as a butter on doing meats great and stuff? Great for meats, great for fish, great for prawns, delicious. Now look at that, I'm just going to scoop in a bit of butter. Like so. And I'm just going to sort of spread it around. And that's going to give it a lovely flavour that's going to sink into that bread when it cooks and gets hot. 
So how much garlic did you use, asked like, Mida. Um, depending on how strong you like it, Mida, one clove or two cloves. I put one in, it was a big fat one. Um, but if you want two, no problem. It'll, it'll, it'll handle that. Right, next is my cheese. I've got some mozzarella here. So I'm now going to stuff this with mozzarella. So that's the stuff you buy ready. Um, Just ready, grated. grated mozzarella. Nice and stringy. When it melts, it's got that lovely gooey stringiness. And could you use cheddar? You could use cheddar. Um, I prefer a milder cheese than a stronger flavour cheese. It's more, I just want that effect of that gooiness. Um, there's a lot of flavours going on in here, so you don't want to overpower the sausage with your stronger cheese. So there, you see how I've done that? There, so we've got in there, garlic butter, we've got the bread hollowed out, and we've got the cheese. Now here's where the clever bit comes with the sausages. So I've got some good quality sausages, and I'm just gonna grab a sausage, just split it, and all I wanna do is take that skin off. Like so, see how it comes off? Just take your time, it will peel off nice and easy. Like so. Get it off, and then just take your time, see that? Just really easy, peels off nice and simple. And then, I'm going to get my sausage and I'm going to squish it on top like so. And you press and flatten it till it covers all the cheese and it covers the bread so it forms like a crust. And you nip it down onto the bread like so and that will keep everything from oozing out. And you get it nice and flat and even so it cooks evenly. And that is my bread almost ready to go on the grill. So you see how I've stuffed it? See how I've flattened it? And that is about ready. I'll do the other one, show you again. Gently put the knife just in, into the skin. You don't need to dig it right in. The skin will peel off nice and easy. Like so. Then get my sausage when it's off. Look at that, amazing. Squish it a little bit, get it on and start moulding it so it's nice and smooth and even into my sausage little boats, I don't know what you'd call them. Let's call them a boat, boat. I like the idea of a boat. And then they are ready to go on the barbecue. You keep an eye on them Julie while I wash my hands. Is there any other way you can cook them? Does it have to be on a barbecue? Um, it can be baked in the oven and um, they'll work well, but um, brilliant on a barbecue. Absolutely brilliant. So, all I'm going to do with that, just going to give it a little bit of salt. Wonderful. A little bit of pepper. Like so, I'm just going to give it the tiniest drizzle of oil. It doesn't need a lot because there's a bit of fat in that sausage. And then, that's going on my barbecue. Now I'm going to give it four minutes, then I'm going to check it. So basically you want to check that the sausage is cooked, and if it is, then I'm going to turn it upside down and put it bread side down just to warm it up for another, say, two minutes, maybe three minutes. But follow me to my barbecue, my wonderful swan barbecue there. Temperature's quite high. So what I've done is I've set it lower one side and higher the other. What I want is I want to put it on the low side so it doesn't burn but produce heat to make it bake almost like an oven. So that's sausage side down. Sausage side down, see that? Boom, nice and simple. Get right in, have a look. And I've set my timer for four minutes. Now what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to serve it with just a very simple tomato chutney. Um, nice bit on top, you can do chilli sauce, you can do barbecue sauce, whatever you like. I like barbecue sauce, but we tested that this morning for breakfast. 
and we had it with tomato chutney, it was amazing. So, breakfast, perfect dish. Lunch, amazing dish. In the evening, chopped up at the fingers for like a snacky party barbecue tea with a couple of cold beers. Perfect. So, there is our first one. We'll get this cheese back in the fridge. And let's have a look, see how it's looking. Yeah, see that? Nothing's burning, nothing's in trouble. Sausage is just nice and perfect. All I'm going to do is let that set. Don't move it too much. You want to leave it to set in case it falls apart. How long do you? Four minutes I've set it for. And then I'll turn it, give it a look, feel the sausage, check if it's cooked. But what I want is I want to make sure it's hot enough so when we open it, our cheese melts. And there's a little lovely little trick with a barbecue I could show you if you have this barbecue. If you don't have it, get it. It's amazing. Next thing I'm going to do is a wonderful surf and turf sandwich. Now if you've heard of surf and turf before, it's normally a real classic 70s retro thing. It's a great American thing. And you have steak and you have something fishy. Normally lobster or normally some great big gorgeous prawns. I've got a gorgeous sirloin steak here. And I've left out a room temperature, which is really important. You don't want to cook your meat if it's cold. This is it. Room temperature has been out for about 40 minutes. And I'll just give it a little season. Get it some salt on the fat as well. If you don't like fat, that's absolutely no problem. But what you want to do is cut that fat off after it's cooked. So cook it with the fat. If you don't like fat, cut it off. But don't cut the fat off first. You need that fat to keep that nice and moist. A bit of pepper now. Lots of nice ground pepper. I want that lovely sort of peppery finish to my steak. Like so. Perfect. Just leave that to sit. And I'm going to make, to go with that, some chilli onions, which is really delicious. It's going to give a lovely vibrancy, a lovely bit of heat, a lovely bit of saviness. So we've got one red onion. Keep the root on, keeps it from falling apart. And we're just going to, very thin slices. When you feel you can't handle it anymore because it's getting wobbly, just flip it down and then slice that way. Yep, they're going in my bowl. Show you again, nice and thin. Feel it getting wobbly and a bit like, oh, you're not in control. Flip it down, slice that way. That's going in my bowl. That's going in with some salt. So it's going in with some fresh lemon juice. And that's going to form like a pickle. And these are a great way to do really simple, natural pickled onions. And then also going to get jalapeno uh, chili. Oop. Going to check out my sausages, I think. Lovely and cooked. Look at that. I can see the cheese in there just starting to melt, so I'm just going to give that say another three minutes, I think. Put that down. Once that comes out, we let it rest a little bit, a little bit too much, you know. But let me get back to this. So we've got onions, we've got salt. We've got lemon juice, we've got some fresh jalapenos. I'm just gonna do some slices of them. So These have got a nice bit of spice to them. Leave the seeds in if you like it hot. If you don't, take them out. All the heat is in the membrane and the seeds. Me, we're leaving it in because it's hot. And they will give a little kick. So maybe it's best if you're doing these to serve this as a separate side dish and then you can gauge how much you wanna put in. But there's my lovely chili onions there that will melt down 
in the vinegar or marinade or soften and that will give a lovely piquancy to the burger. It's going to enjoy having the lemon with the prawns and that will work really well. Take a look, so we'll just leave that to the side. So I've got my steak coming room temperature. It's been seasoned with salt and pepper. I've got my chili onions doing, and now I'm going to show you how to do my prawns. So buy these prawns, normally frozen. Have them with the shell if you can, because they're better quality. And all you've got to do is, I'm going to show you, once you've peeled the shell off, all you have to do, you see that black there? Yeah, that's its intestine track. Just make sure you take that out. Yeah, normally it's out, but you want to get that out. It's gritty. No one wants to eat intestine track. See that nice and clean? Always do this with your prawns. Just check every prawn. Perfect and clean. Do they come cleaned? Some do, but some don't. So you see that there? Even these are ones that are supposed to be cleaned, but I check every single prawn. It's really important. There's three. And then that's the last one there. And all I'm going to do with that is I'm just going to slice it in half, but not all the way through, and just flatten them so they look a little bit like what they call butterflying. And they will cook really So you're going to barbecue evenly, these? And these are going to get barbecued. Look at that, gorgeous. Any questions, guys? I'm please, just going to um, wash my hands. Yep. Yeah, any questions, guys? Please fire away. So there we go. I'm going to just put on there a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. It's a perfect dish for this weather today, isn't it? For barbecue weather. Absolutely brilliant. We're going to have this for lunch. Obviously, we're really spoiled here. There's a little bit of olive oil, and they're ready to go on. Perfect timing. Gives me an opportunity to have a look at my bread. They are nearly ready. Bread side's good. I'm just going to give it the last little bit of colour on there. Two more minutes and they're perfect. Now, have a look at this. This is my famous butter bath. So that is at 50 degrees. And in there is garlic, in there's thyme, in there's salt, pepper, rosemary. So what I'm going to do with that is when I cook my steak, and you've heard the phrase to rest your steak, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rest my steak in my butter bath. I was speaking to Dave from Swan, he couldn't believe what I told him, this is how I do my steak. Check this out, do this, and it is the most delicious steak you'll ever have. So how have you prepared that one? So that's just a block of butter. And that's just melted to 50 degrees and just so it feels above just you know sort of 10 degrees 15 degrees more than blood temperature that just sit there in and they're my aromats and they're just going to slowly slowly get all that flavor into the butter then when i cook the steak and i rest it i'm going to plonk that steak straight in that butter to rest it's not going to keep cooking it's just going to rest it's going to take in some of that butter the flavor it's going to make it really juicy yeah emily jane turner said she's never heard about this the butter um, bath. It's a yeah. secret. So a basically you just you melt the butter on a on a heat. Melt the butter. Good thing about this barbecue is it's got a little hot plate on the side. I did it on here. Just melt it on there. And then ah, keep right. it nice and hot. So I'm gonna put it back. And all I did is it just keeps a lovely temperature. Right. These look like they're ready now. Look at that. That looks good. Perfect breakfast dish, isn't it? A Perfect. nice brunchy dish with an egg, maybe. Okay. You can actually do this, Julie, with an egg. You can put your egg inside instead of your cheese, oh. and you can bake an egg in it. But this is a great... What, like scrambled egg? Just is like a whole egg, and it'll bake and poach like a poached egg. Oh, okay. But there is my breakfast there. I'll bring these over. Now I'm going to turn the temperature up because I want to cook the steak nice and s grilled. And come and have a look at these. 
You have no idea how delicious these are. You cut them up into pieces, cut them in half, like so. Then look, yeah. you've got all that soft, oozy cheese. Look Ooh, at lovely, that. yeah, fabulous Absolutely and garlicky. perfect. Garlicky, yeah. oozy cheese. A great little snacky bit there. Yeah, even children, I think, will like oh, this. Kids will kids love it. Kids will love making this, Julie. They'll love eating it. It's a great way to get everybody involved. That, a plate full of them, with some cold beers or a glass of wine, there is no better barbecue day. So, put that there, and let's cook the steak. So, I'm gonna put just the tiniest little bit of oil on the steak, not a lot, just to help render that fat out. There we go. And this is gonna take, literally, two minutes each side. That's it. I like my steak nice and red. If you want it more medium, do three minutes each side. If you want it well done, do four minutes each side. Also, get your steak the thickness to your thumb joint, sort of that size. That's a good way to make sure your steak is thick enough to cook it like that. What cut of steak is it? This is so long. Really delicious. I'm gonna get that on. Lid down, two minutes. I'm going to serve these today in some nice brioche. Now, one of the, what's good about these brioche buns is they love to be heated up and they love to have a bit of juice and butter. So that lovely steak butter, I'm going to brush some of that on before I toast these on the barbecue. Get more of that steaky, buttery flavour in the bun. No one said it's going to be super healthy for you but it is going to be super delicious so these are just nice simple shop bought brioche buns make sure they're cut in half nice this is going to do one steak will do two sandwiches obviously you can use normal uh, you can burger use buns. Uh, burger buns you can use i quite like the classic burger buns with a uh, little sesame top that's quite nice so they work perfectly well as well let's have a look Temperatures right up, look, temperatures creeping up to 250, exactly where the best grilling temperature is. Look at my butter there, sitting nice and warm, getting all that lovely flavour yeah. in there. You can smell it, it smells amazing. Yeah. It's getting a nice little bit of colour, but we'll leave it. Brilliant. So, beautiful day. Have a look at these now. See how they're starting to soften. You see how they, they're looking a little bit pinky? Yeah. That's because the lemon juice is and the salt is starting to soften the onions and almost make them like pickled. And it's gonna make them less harsh. You're not gonna be really oniony breath. They're gonna be a much sweeter flavor. And in about another 10 minutes, they're gonna be perfect. It doesn't take long. And they will sit also on your fridge. If you make enough, they'll keep for a week. Keep them in the lemon juice, put them in a clean airtight jar. A brilliant, brilliant snack to have with meat, fish, sandwiches. Let's flip the steak. There you go. Should have a nice bit of colour on there now. Look at that. How good does that look? Oh, it's good. So it was two minutes. Two minutes. Now yeah. look how the fat's rendering. Yeah. It's not super burnt. The lid's down, which, ex when you put the lid down, by the way, when you barbecue it, if you have a barbecue with the lid, it stops it flaring up, and it stops it from burning. But if you do get a flare up, here's a lovely little hack what I do. This is a clean bottle spray, but in there, I've got water, apple juice, and apple cider vinegar. And what this is good for is if you get a flare up, or you want to keep your meat from stop drying out, you just give it a little, it doesn't make it vinegary, it just makes it sweeter and it makes it like a really great flavour when it mixes with the salt and it keeps it from flaring or burning. Brilliant idea. Don't use a chemical bottle, get a brand new clean bottle, clean it out properly and then this makes an absolutely wonderful essential tool for your barbecue. That was a good tip wasn't it? Right, got one minute left. I think I'll get my butter and butter the bread. 
ready to put on the grill. Or you could use some of your garlic butter that you had over there. I'm just going to show you how versatile this is. Get a spoon of it. Lots of flavour in there. Just going to give it a little bit of butter like so. And when I toast this buns, it'll be absolutely amazing. So you just do it on that side? The cut just side. that side, yeah. Just the cut side. Like so. And if you could smell this, the lovely smell of the rosemary, the garlic, the thyme. Where will everyone get the recipe for this? The recipes, I can uh, post it online if people want them. I can put them on Instagram. I'll uh, send them over to Swan and we can load it up on there. Or you can put it on Follow Paul's Kitchens page and I'll get them up on there. Right. Let us get this bread now. Steak's done. Gonna rest my steak there. Let me just feel that. That is absolutely perfect. So that steak goes in there. So into there. And all I'm gonna do is submerge it into the butter and then put all the herbs on top like so and that's resting in that gorgeous butter. Now that looks insane don't you think? Yep, smells good. That is a butter bath. Do that and the difference of your food will be phenomenal. And remember this butter can be reused again. Chill that butter down, put it in the fridge, do it again the next day or do it again next time. We'll keep for a couple of weeks. That's a great way to put maximum flavour into your steak. All I'm going to do now is toast my bread. Like so. Get my prawns ready. You don't want it too much, that's fine. Check you don't burn them. No, they're all good, all good. I'm going to get my prawns on to grill. Nearly good, nearly good. Just tinge it at the edges, which is what I like. You keep an eye on that, surely. And they should be ready now. That's what you were looking for. You see that lovely just tinge? Tinge of colour. Yeah. Just a little bit of colour. And it's just toasting up nicely. You don't want it super dry. You just want that lovely little tinge of colour. How long do prawns, prawns take to cook? These prawns are going to take no more then 40 to 50 seconds each side. So, bread's ready. Well, that's a handy little shelf, isn't it? Keep stuff warm. So, if you wanted the, you know, the sausages we did, if you want to keep them warm while you're doing the steak, you could have sat them on there and they would just continue to stay nice and warm. Right, these are ready to turn, believe it or not. Just give a gentle turn. Like so. I'm going to give a little bit of seed on that side. They're gorgeous. Okay. Put a bowl. For them. Nearly ready. The steak is resting nicely there. Just going to give that a turn. Super duper. Prawns are ready. Nice and moist. You see how they've gone slightly opaque? Yeah. That's where we're looking for. We don't want to overcook these prawns. Gorgeous prawns. Let's get my bread. Which is nice and hot. Do you need this steak bringing over? I'm going to bring it over now. We are done. Get a nice bowl for these steaks. Then we can fiddle some flavour now. Oh, this looks great. So, I've got two bread buns. I fancy, this is really delicious. A little bit of harissa chilli paste. It's not super strong. It's really nice. That seems a lot, but it, I've got to tell you, this is just very fragrant. It is not super hot. 
It's just very, very mild. A little bit of chili on there. I've got a little bit of my garlic butter here, which I'm just going to put a little bit on my prawns and let that soak in. Like so, which is delicious. And then I'm going to cut That's my a dish steak. on its own, isn't this it, is those garlic just prawns? Insane. So I've got my steak here. And of course, remember, I like it rare. So you'll see that when I cut it. How beautiful and pink it is. Look at that, that's perfect. That's how I like it. Yeah, I leave the fat on, but if you don't, this is where, because Julie doesn't like the fat, so now I would cut that off for her. Then I would cut hers this way, so the fat's off. Look at that, gorgeous and rested, swimming in delicious butter. I'm gonna put my steak on there. So, a bit more. And I'll do this one with the gorgeous fat for me, which I like. Then, two mega prawns, like so. I'm going to pile on these gorgeous, fresh, and lively chili onions, like so. And then, my lids on. Now it's gonna fall apart. Get yourself a couple of nice cocktail sticks. Just keep them good. Mm, looks good. I've got my sausages, all gorgeous. And there we have some great ideas for barbecue. Something different. We've got our sausages stuffed with cheese and garlic bread. We've got our gorgeous surf and turf burgers, sirloin steak, chili, onions, and king prawns. Have a great day. Get out there and barbecue. Try these recipes. You'll absolutely love it. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you very much.